Um, I have the great pleasure to announce now, introducing to Blue Hollis. Um, she is a wonderful, wonderful person. Uh, she's the most, she's, she's a force of nature, but at the same time she's the calmest person, the most tranquil person I think I've ever met in my entire life. Um, she's kind of best, better known for sort of zero waste and for her Instagram sort of thing, but uh, over the last few months and or year and even, she's got more and more into activism. And um, it's really amazing to see how, how powerful her voice is, and she's using that following that she built up to amazing effects. So can everyone please give Blue a very, very warm welcome. Thanks.
Now I'd like to share with you 10 actionable ways to embrace your introverted activism. My first tip is to practice daily self-love. This is a holistic approach and perhaps not the sort of immediately gratifying tip you were hoping for, but it's number one because it's perhaps the most important for all of us as activists, but especially for us introverts. Accepting our more withheld and quiet nature is important for our own mental health and the sustainability of our activism, and we come out more powerful for it. Stop shying away from being the thoughtful, reserved, quieter person in the group. It's only misguided judgments that people that make us believe that means that we're any lesser than anyone else. Learn your strength by diving deep into self-love and acceptance as a daily practice, and bring those to the table and your activist community. To get you started, I recommend Quiet, a book by Susan Cain, and a website called Introvert Dear, a community of and for introverts and highly sensitive people. Number two, meditate before actions. Taking time to go within, sometimes something as, as introverts we're already familiar with, is a great way to gather our thoughts before an action and remind ourselves why we're doing it. Think of the non-humans you're speaking out for and the humans you're empowering to make more aligned choices so that they can live in harmony with themselves and others. My third tip is to decompress after actions. Taking time to assimilate and absorb each action is important for our brains to understand them better, dissect them for learning and growth, and work through anything that was aggravating or upsetting so it can be dealt with and not brought to the next action. Decompressing can look like going for a walk alone, going for food with other activists, journaling, journaling, meditating, crying, exercising, painting, writing, or calling a friend. My fourth tip is to buddy up. Going to events with a friend can be a great idea as it can take the pressure off feeling like we're in the spotlight or that we're having to personally create vegans out of strangers in one conversation. The pressure of having the perfect response to all questions is off when we have someone to share the interaction with and it can mean that we can take the back seat when we feel like it and take the conversation when we want to. Number five is to step back and observe. Observing is in our nature as introverts. Namely, noticing all of the exit signs at a party and making sure we're aware of any potential risk of having to do any certain group activity or public speaking. Don't shy away from this tendency. It can be a great strength. When we step off to the side and observe our surroundings, we're the ones who can better spot someone lingering at the outskirts of an outreach event, most likely a fellow introvert, and can calmly approach for a quieter and more comfortable conversation. We're also able to see any potential risks in terms of approaching aggression from members of the drunk public, police interference, underage children watching gory footage without parental consent, or a member of the activist team who may need help or support. My sixth tip is to go to socials and develop community. There's nothing more terrifying to an introvert than small talk. So getting to know your local team on a more personal level will allow us to sink into the group better create a safe space to share ideas and cultivate a stronger sense of community, which creates an impenetrable force that is vital to our group now more than ever. Go to socials, create more social events of your own, and connect with those you feel a kinship with, and make this a priority. Number seven is to communicate with organizers how you're feeling. When we let others know how we're feeling, it can help alleviate some of the stress or worry, and it also helps the organizer have a better understanding of the group as a whole. Knowing the strength of each individual is a great way to better be able to work together harmoniously and encourage each other to use their skills and strengths to further the movement. Eight is to be mindful not to compare yourself to others. There are a lot of great examples of activists using their extroverted nature to speak out for animals, but this isn't the only way that we can advocate for others. Be mindful not to compare yourself to them. That may only serve to dim your own light and hinder you from reaching your full potential as an activist. Be inspired by and pick tips from other activists, but use them to help shape your own style rather than mimicking their methods. We need diversity in our voices to extend our reach and find the ears of those with a multitude of different temperaments. Nine is to encourage or start your own activism events. If you feel like the activism near you isn't what isn't what you feel comfortable doing long term, or you're finding yourself feeling burned out regularly, start your own events centered around activities you feel more aligned with. There are infinite ways to reach people, and we don't have to stick to the popularized methods if 
if they're not best serving us. Brainstorm some ideas, get creative, and start something new. My last tip is to put yourself in a leadership role. As introverts, we know that being an introvert doesn't we know that being an introvert doesn't equate to being shy. It simply means we're stimulated by our internal world and need times of solitude to recharge. So although it may not be the obvious choice for someone, for some people to put an introvert in a leadership role because of the misnomers around being a quieter person, we bring a lot to the table when it comes to leading others. We're great listeners. We manage uncertainty well. We're good at de-escalating. We're not as impulsive. We tend to be more in tune with our creativity, and we're skilled at keeping the larger picture in mind. So don't be afraid of putting yourself into leadership roles within the community or taking on a more active role for organizing events. Some of the best people I know are extroverts. They make incredible activists and wonderful friends. This is not to say that any one way of being is better than the other. In fact, what I'm saying is that all ways of being are equally valid and bring their own strengths. We need the power of both the yin and the yang to carve out the world we want to see. A world that is filled with diversity, creativity, acceptance, and compassion. Extroverts, I ask that you keep inspiring the world with your activism. We need your energy, your volume, and your spirit. Introverts, I ask you to be brave enough to own your introverted nature and bring it with you to outreach events and liberation actions because we need you too. The animals need your soft voice, your sensitive nature, and your gentle spirit to guide others towards a more loving and aligned future. We all start from different places, different springboards of confidence, communication skills, and levels of outgoingness. But we all start with activism being something new to us and something that we have to mold to fit ourselves, not the other way around. Nobody is born an activist. Our society creates a reality that requires us, and we're all here to show up how we're able with our own unique qualities. It's time to embrace yours and build on your own self-love and acceptance for the sake of the non-human animals who need our voices to uplift theirs. Thank you. Activism that's kind of 
means a lot more solitude and not necessarily talking with the public, but there's that option too, so you can start doing something like that and then maybe like tea and cake outreach and then build it up to maybe doing cubes. So, um, yeah, I feel like it depends on the area. That's why I think that a more of a variety of things to encourage people. I think what's most off-putting is that people see activism firstly online, and a lot of online people have that online presence where maybe they even amp themselves up to be on camera, and it can seem quite extroverted, even if the person is themselves introverted, but for the sake of the camera, they're kind of playing it up, and that can be quite off-putting. I know it was, for me, for a while, I felt that I had to be like that, in person, constantly, and it would be very draining for an introvert. Um, but then I went to some, and I realized it's not really like that, and I can change it and mold it however I liked to feel more comfortable. Any other questions? Anyone? You can also have an open discussion if anyone wants to chip in and just give a viewpoint. <laughs> Um, yeah, so sometimes we do like, uh, I don't know, like Earthlings events and, and stuff where you should kind of show laptops and show footage about what happens to animals, but also events where you kind of just have a sign and show like a, an image of an animal in a position of suffering. Um, and even without interactions with like actual, a dialogue with the public, I think sometimes it's so powerful just to be there and have, be a presence for that animal um, in, on the footage at that time because it's kind of showing that these animals aren't being ignored and our presence in that situation is kind of stopping from the animal agriculture industry from hiding what's going on. So it's kind of powerful without, even without an interaction being on the street and just doing that, you're kind of being the voice for the animal who's being ignored. Yep, thanks for sharing. <laughs> Does anyone have anything else to say about introversion? Uh, just because I know you, I know you've been to some of the DXC events in Brighton where you actually go and disrupt places like McDonald's. I just wanted to find out your kind of personal point of view on how you found those disruptions as an introvert as well. That's a really good question. Um, I suppose, like Louis was saying, there are lots of different roles. So you don't necessarily have to be the one giving a speech in front of people. You can be someone who takes a step back, maybe be, um, maybe film it for online, take photographs. Um, there are lots of different roles with every action. Um, but also there's a sense of, I may be scared and trembling when I'm going to those events, but the necessity outweighs my fear. And I feel that I have to do them. And so that kind of outweighs everything for me. Can I ask a question? <laughs> um, I think when I first got into activism, there was this, I always felt this heavy expectation that I was supposed to be like shanty and supposed to be like really out there. And I think you, when you mentioned about different roles, I think that's really important because one thing I always used to do, and I still do, is hide behind the camera, especially vigils and things. So I, you know, you see me in the camera, everything, and it's, it's not just because I want to capture pictures, it's because I want to hide behind it. And I don't, I also want to protect myself from what I'm seeing in a sense, so it provides me with a shield and such. So um, I guess my question is, like, how do you deal with that expectation when you go to an action and mm, do you ever feel as if people are expecting you and not thinking you're good enough as an activist if you're not like shouting and screaming or getting in the face of a security guard or something like that? So managing other people's expectations. Um, I feel like at the actual events, People are there for the animals and they're not necessarily looking around and judging the other people there. I feel like the activism community is really embracing of different types of people. So I don't ever feel the eyes on me when I'm there. I think it's more online and for people who are just getting into activism to look online and think, oh God, I've got to be like that person who's like screaming in front of the camera. But then when you actually go to them, you realize that, I mean, that might be like one person in the corner, but like the rest of the people are there like with the animals and with each other and in more supportive, quieter roles. So I've never felt that in person, personally. Thank you. Hands up, who's an introvert? Who considers themselves an introvert? <laughs> uh, our family. <laughs> um, of those people who put your hands up, I know this is a really difficult thing to ask introverts, but what is your, if, 
anyone who's very heavily involved in activism, what is your chosen form of activism? Is it a cube where you can hide behind the mask a little bit, or is it like a vigil when you can film and not say anything to anyone? Like, does anyone want to volunteer their favourite form of activism? Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Devon, I'm also an introvert. Um, yeah, my favorite way of activism is using my talents, which is actually drawing and doing art. Um, so yeah, I use my artistic talents to raise awareness of, yeah, uh, yeah raising awareness for planet destruction and what, uh, yeah, what animal agriculture is doing to the planet, actually, and trying to make something visual that's easy to understand, but still, yeah, powerful and simple, and yeah, just using my talents to get the message across. And how do we see your artwork? Are you Instagram? What is it? Come on, tell us. Uh, it's Stingwe. Um, it's kind of difficult to understand. Um, I'm from Iceland, so it's yeah, an Icelandic word. And so S T Y N G V I. Yeah. Thank you very much. Any other interests? Come on, use some of that energy. Come on, expand it. <laughs> No other favorite forms of activism? Who does, who's an introvert who does cubes? Baby. Oh, yeah, good. <laughs> Do you want to talk a little bit about that at all? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would definitely say being the cube, in the, in the cube of truth is a good form of activism when you're uh, very introverted. Um, and I'm myself I'm very introverted, but I've actually gone to doing um, outreach. I've slowly worked my way to outreach, but definitely the cube, being in the cube is very good because you don't have to talk to anybody, but at the same, ta same time you're still being very effective as, as an activist. Because pe you're holding the, the, either a sign or a, like a TV screen of the footage, and people, you can see the reactions of the people that see the footage, and also you can hear the conversations that other outreachers are talking with them, and you can even learn from different outreachers and forms of activism, so that's why I do feel being in the cube is good for intro introverts especially, I feel. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you very much. Um, so, ah, we have a question. Do you mind me taking over this? Yeah, it's not a question, it's just a case of, um, so I grow veg and then I give that out to people so they can taste unchemical, natural grown, proper food. Um, and that's my action as an activist. Amazing, thank you very much. I mean, it's, that's another example of other things that people might not consider actually like a form of activism, but I think culinary activism and food and giving is like, is, is, is fantastic, thank you so much. Any other introverts for favorite forms of activism? Speak on behalf of my sister in law, but she's a very good baker and she makes lots of cakes, vegan cake on Instagram. You should follow it. Just to divert, but she considers herself an introvert and she does that, which is really powerful. Thank you, thank you. And, and my plug is too shameless. If you've got an Instagram or something, please do, uh, do share. Hi, uh, just on that note, I was wondering if you could share with us your journey into veganism in general and also your um, uptake of social media as well. So, how I became vegan. Um, I was raised um, vegetarian for ethical reasons and so I was already there, like, in the mindset. <laughs> Uh, my mindset um, of like veganism was already there, it's just um, when I knew better, I did better. So when I found out about veganism, I went vegan kind of overnight, which is easy for me to say because I was already kind of most of the way there. Um, and then what was the other question? How did I get, in, how did I get into social media? Um, because I'm an introvert, so I don't want to talk to people in real life. I want to do it online, it's a lot easier. I feel like I have a lot to say. But when it comes to speaking with someone, I'm like really tongue-tied. Like just stay silent, so then I'll go home and say all the things that I wish I would have said to them online. So <laughs> that's how that started. Awesome. 
Who is in Schmerz? Who does? Uh, who's the vigils? Anyone? Do you want to talk about it? Um, especially, uh, kind of last year, I was doing a lot of vigils for a university project. Actually, I do photography and artwork as well. So. Um, that kind of led to me doing it almost every month, which in retrospect was a very bad idea because I got very burnt out. Um, I think you mentioned about using your camera as kind of a, a mask in a way, it kind of gives you something, it gives you a purpose while you're there. I mean, everybody's taking pictures on their phone, but if you can do it in a very focused way, it kind of alleviates the pressure of being there a little bit, um, which can be good and bad because I don't think, I think if you're at a vigil, and you're not fully immersed in the moment, then you can go home and you can take a lot of the experience with you and I think it's best to deal with it whilst you're there. So there's definitely pros and cons to using your camera kind of as a tool. Um, I think it, it's hard. I don't think I've I don't think I've kind of found that balance of being able to deal with it properly just yet. Um, I'm not sure if there is one, I'm not sure if there's a you know, tried and tested method of going to a vigil and coming back from it feeling okay. I don't think we should feel okay. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's something I recommend everybody does if they haven't done it yet. Um, but it does take its time on you, whether you're an introvert or not. Or you don't think is that taxing. I 
think it's really a good practice to do that every single time so that you can feel fresh for the next one and not bring it with you. Have you ever felt guilty for taking moments for self-care? Some activists do say that they feel guilty that they shouldn't be taking breaks, so they shouldn't be thinking of themselves first. I don't see it as thinking of yourselves first because if you burn out, you're not going to be any help for the animals. So I take time off um, at like regular intervals and I do that for the animals. That's how I see it. Thank you. Um, unless anyone has any more questions, I think we're pretty much at the end. a question but it's more like you know if, if you are like super introverted or even if you're not introverted but you want to take like time off from activism like there's no harm in if you are able to like donating to a cause that you believe in so for instance I've taken a few weeks off I've you know I'm in a position where I can donate even if it's five pound a month to I personally donate to sanctuary because they do an incredible job of taking animals on who are lucky enough to not go to slaughter and live their lives out um, you know, and that activism in itself, you know, helping people look after the animals who are being saved. So you can't feel like you can't even leave the house, it's something that you can do online through the internet, so I just want to mention that. Also, sanctuaries are sanctuaries for introverts, they're really great places to go to. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? kind of like obviously activism to like the public is kind of different to you know activism to like friends and family and things it seems like you know it's a whole different thing kind of taking on that sort of um, that way of doing it so I just wondered like how do you find it's best to like reach people in that way um, you know what sort of activism do you have you managed to kind of convert many of your friends or family or I find it the hardest actually more than people that you don't have that kind of relationship with. That makes sense. Yeah, it's definitely harder because we're already more entangled and we have that relationship set um, as it is already and then you're changing that, which is different to coming to someone fresh already as an activist or as a vegan. Um, I was lucky enough to change my family to be vegan pretty instantly, um, but I also um, <laughs> know a lot of people who they still haven't and it's really challenging for them, I would say. Because they, they already have that relationship with you, how you are. I don't. I think if you change yourself and how you interact with your family, there's going to be a defense because they're going to think like, oh, I, I don't recognize you, I don't know you, and that's going to seem quite alien to them. And veganism is probably already quite alien to them. So I think be yourself and interact with them how you normally would. Um, but at the same time, don't shy away from the topics that are that you're passionate about. Um, so talk about it as you would talk about anything else, like what, what you get up to, or other, other interests that you have, maybe art or whatever it is, um, and keep it casual, and how you, you'll come across as quite casual, um, and they'll probably like be more relaxing as they receive it, if that makes sense. So outreach is definitely different because you've got maybe like a set time with someone you're outreaching at like an event, you maybe have like a few minutes, and so you kind of have to go in a bit hard and be like, watch this footage, but with your family I would suggest being more um, play, playing the long game. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else? Mm, all right. Um, I just wanted to say in response to that is uh, the simplest way that I found, and I wish I did more activism to be honest, is to cook your friends and family a meal. Just a simple meal for the people you love and uh, food tends to have a magical way of bringing people together. And the thing I get most often after people who aren't vegan eat the meal is I couldn't tell the difference or I didn't realise and it was still delicious, surprisingly. <laughs> but um, that's just what I suggest because I, I find it difficult to go out there and scream and shout and be loud. Um, so if you just bring someone into your home and cook them a nice meal. It's a simple way of getting someone on board. Thank you. Does anybody have anything to add to that? Culinary activism? Um, 
No? Okay. Well, thank you very much. I just want to uh, say thanks so much, Blue, for doing that. And can everyone please give that one last one? Screening of Planet Vegan and uh, Q&A afterwards, so that's going to be really special as well. Thank you.